What is your theory of aging? So why do we age? Do you think it's programmed or is it just that we get to post uh, reproductive age and then we just kind of fall apart? So yeah, what, why do we age? Yeah, well, very likely we age because a aging did not really exist in prehistoric times. Uh, so in prehistoric times, you didn't have really the chance to become oil, old because mostly you died uh, due to external causes of death. Uh, you were eaten or you died of a hunger or an infectious disease or a tribe member that, uh, uh, that killed you uh, and so on. So it was, you, in prehistoric times, there, you could not really get very old in, in, in most cases. Uh, um, so, um, so that's why there was no real selection pressure to make uh, as thousand years old, for example, and so there was no reason to uh, create humans uh, or evolve humans that would live for thousand years, for example, because most humans died before forty. Huh? Um, uh, so that's why aging actually exists. Uh, there, it was a very hostile environment, and to create a body that can live for hundreds of years, that requires the body to invest a lot of extra resources into maintaining the DNA, maintaining the cell function and so on. And uh, why should you invest those researches, uh, resources uh, for, to enable a lifespan of hundreds of years if most of these bodies died or organisms died much, much sooner? Uh, uh, so that's actually why aging exists. There was no evolutionary incentive to uh, keep people alive for a very long time. Uh, because uh, it was not really possible to do so uh, because it was a very hostile environment. Um, so likely that's the reason why we age, uh, because there was no selection pressure uh, after our uh, uh, reproductive age um, to maintain the body for a, for a longer time. Um, of course, there is some discussion. Uh, is aging more? Uh, a lot of people think we age because uh, we need to make room for young organisms and so on. A lot of scientists are against that notion because that would be like more group selection, but selection actually mostly works on an individual level. Uh, but um, perhaps there are some exceptions. So it's an interesting and complicated discussion. Uh, but uh, I think the, the first reason I highlighted is the most well-known and common, uh, ac commonly accepted explanation uh, for why aging exists. Now, of course, in our uh, current society, things are completely different than uh, 20,000 years ago. Uh, now our society is very safe. We, are, uh, we can live much, much longer. So very likely every child now born with a mutation that could significantly extend uh, his or her life um, it would be useful because you can now live up to 80 years. So if there is a mutation that would enable you to live to 120, yeah, you can grow that old because our society is now so safe. I, I don't die of an infectious disease when you're 20 years old anymore, or it's, the chances are much lower. So that's likely why we now see a gradual increase in lifespan. Uh, so, uh, I mean, there are other reasons why every 10 year, our uh, lifespan increases with 2.5 years uh, because of... Uh, uh, let's say better sanitation and vaccines and better medical treatments and so on, but uh, also evolutionary speaking, uh, very likely you know, over thousands and thousands of years, we will see further, uh, let's say, uh, uh, longer lifespans because of also uh, this, uh, this process. And uh, uh, that's interesting to think about. But I think with the current biotechnologies, uh, we will not just slow down aging, but even partially reverse aging, so make uh, old people younger again. Uh, and that will be will have, of course, a much, much faster and bigger impact than uh, these evolutionary mechanisms uh, I uh, just uh, mentioned. So I had one question. So you, you say that, you know, aging is complex because we have these multiple different reasons that are happening, which is one of the reasons that we have uh, that, you know, like Novus Core has multiple um, ingredients. Do you see that there could be one underlying cause kind of below that? Like so certainly the causes of aging can be linked together, like the, the NAD comes down and, and it's also linked to senescent cells going up. And, and if you lower one of them, then the other one kind of recovers as well. So do you think it's possible that there's an, like a more fundamental reason uh, like underneath the hallmarks? Yes, that could be. Uh, uh, so th there are a lot of aging hallmarks uh, based on, on the paper uh, in 2013, I believe, uh, Hallmarks of Aging, uh, which started like, with nine hallmarks. And there, of course, are more other hallmarks like cross-linking that were not in that paper and transcriptomic problems and so on. Um, 
But yeah, it could be uh, likely not all hallmarks are equally important. And perhaps there are more fundamental hallmarks uh, or more important mechanisms that cause us to age. And uh, a, a lot of scientists believe, for example, uh, or some scientists believe that epigenetic dysregulation is very important in aging. Uh, um, so it's not so much DNA damage or mitochondrial dysfunction or even protein accumulation. Uh, they believe that uh, dysregulation of the epigenome is a, a very important reason why we age. Um, and it could make sense because, uh, yeah, the epigenome is, of course, very uh, powerful. It determines which genes are switched on or off. And the problem is when we get older, the system becomes dysregulated. Uh, so some genes that should be switched off are switched on, like pro-cancer genes, uh, which increases our likelihood of getting cancer when we get older and vice versa. Uh, so some genes that should be switched on are switched off, uh, like housekeeping or maintenance genes or repair genes and so on. Uh, and that could contribute to aging, this epigenetic dysregulation. Um, and actually every cell in our body has the same DNA, uh, so 3 billion base pairs. Um, but of course, a liver cell is a liver cell because only in a liver cell, mainly liver genes are active and not the heart genes and the muscle genes and the brain genes and so on. Uh, and we know all our cells have very different lifespans despite having the same DNA. Uh, so we know a neuron can live up to 80 or 100 years, while a skin cell that has the same DNA as a neuron only lives for four, uh, for four weeks. Uh, um, and that is because of the epigenome. Uh, so the epigenome switches on and off genes in the skin cell that makes it a skin cell, but increases lifespan to about a month. While in a neuron, uh, the epigenome enables the neuron to live up to 80 years. Um, so the epigenome could be very powerful. And we also see it in nature. Uh, you have, for example, queen bees. They have the same DNA as the worker bees. But the queen bee can live up to five years or even longer, while a worker bee uh, lives for only a few weeks. Uh, um, so despite having the same genome, so it's epigenetically. Actually, if you take a worker bee uh, when it's young and you uh, nourish it with specific foods, uh, with royal jelly, then the worker bee becomes a uh, worker bee larvae, becomes a queen bee. And, uh, and will live for many years, while uh, normally uh, a worker bee would have only a very short lifespan. And because in the royal jelly, there are specific substances that have epigenetic effects and modify, uh, have a very big impact, as you can see. Um, and a final example, why I also believe that epigenome could be very important in aging, is uh, an explanation of why babies are born young. It's very remarkable. Uh, but um, why are babies born zero years old? Uh, because they are born from a mother who is, for example, 30 years old. So the X cell of the mother, all her X cells are also 30 years old. Um, but if the 30 year old X cell in a 30 year old mother is fertilized by a 30 year old sperm cell from the father, the 30 year old X cell reboots itself to zero years so that that uh, baby is zero years old, not as old as the mother, you see? Um, and that's mainly uh, done through epigenetic reprogramming. So the 30 year old X cell when it's fertilized is epigenetically reprogrammed to zero years. So the baby is not as old as the mother, but is zero years old. Um, and uh, these, these are one of the many examples why I indeed think that the epigenome is very powerful. And we also see that the best clocks to measure aging or your biological age are epigenetic clocks, not clocks that look at your DNA and so on. Actually, has been quite of a disappointment. Uh, but epigenetic clocks are currently one of the best uh, clocks we have to assess your aging process. Um, and we also see, of course, with the Yamanaka factor experiments, that uh, if you trans gently upregulate in a cyclical way Yamanaka factors, you can rejuvenate old mice. Uh, you can make them younger again. Uh, and that's also mainly through epigenetic reprogramming because the Yamanaka factors, they uh, epigenetically reprogram cells and even entire organisms uh, uh, to a more younger state. Uh, so uh, there are many other reasons why I think the epigenome is very interesting, but these are a few uh, why perhaps epigenetic dysregulation is a, a more important hallmark of aging than some others.